namo buddhaya kung hii fachai. About three, four days ago, one of our neighbors, who is a member of uh, our Buddhist circle, she gave me a tray of losang. So get the picture, yeah? She's Chinese. She gives me a tray of losang. We don't even know how to pronounce losang. So when we look at it, say, what do we do? Then we thought we called Chinese friends. So our Chinese friends came to a Sinhalese house to do losang. And so we did losang and it was very nice. So the historical aspect of that is for the first time in human history, a Chinese ritual was conducted in a Sinhalese house. Okay, and that will go down in history. Lah. Okay, uh, but what is the point of that? The point of that is, as was I afraid that my Sinhalese Buddhists will catch me and send me to a Buddhist, Sinhalese Buddhist hell for taking part in a pagan ritual? Okay? No. This is the Buddhist attitude. All right? First, I'd like to, uh, to, to give you what, what, what is that about? It's about I'd like to share with you as part. My, my talk has two parts. First part is the general idea of what rituals are and how they affect our human race. That whether I am Sinhalese and you are Chinese, it does not matter. We are both descendants of monkeys. Okay, and so so let's not let's not get carried away with all of this. And that's the sort of Buddhist attitude towards this. There's a big cosmic, there's a big uh, historical humanity uh, reason for celebrating rites and rituals, which is necessary for us, which is necessary. That's the first part. The second part is that that second part starts about two p.m. Uh, I will be talking about what Buddhists would say about rites and rituals, yeah, and put you at rest to say that many things that we do when we change our religion, we don't have to change our culture. We don't need to give up things that make us comfortable. Why is that so? We'll try and examine that. And that part is called religion and spirituality. What's the difference there? I, I was talking to you about Sinhalese and Chinese, but what I was trying to get at was that be behind that, there is a common humanity. You all know that we humans began our journey about two million years ago, starting in Africa. Eight Africans left Africa two million years ago and then they went up to Israel that way, went to China, went to India, went uh, to Southeast Asia on that side. The other side went to Europe, etc., etc., etc. So at the end of the day, our IC should show us Bangsa Africa. So we are Africans. So let's not forget about it. We have a common humanity. We have a hu common humanity, and that common humanity transcends all boundaries. And we need to see that. And what are these things that we call common? Our practices, the things that we do. No matter which part of the world you come from, no matter how long your history goes back, we have the same kind of activities, the same kind of needs. That's the important word. We have lots of needs that we have that we need to, uh, to, to express. Yeah? And, and these are common. The way it is expressed may be different, but the need is there. What is that need? And that brings me to the first line, which is the need to uh, the, the evolution of self-consciousness. I told you two million years ago, but before that already, what makes us human? Yeah, we started off as monkeys and then we evolved and evolved. But somewhere as our brain began to grow bigger, yeah, we 
started to look around, and one of the things that separated us from animals, yeah, is that what we call the evolution of self-consciousness. We began to be aware of ourselves as I versus you. Yeah, and so I, because it, I am here and you are there, we separated and we thought of ourselves as individuals. The I concept comes about. The I concept is the self-consciousness. And that self-consciousness is what makes us look around us. And one of the things we became, I'm keeping a very long story, very short. One of the things that brought us, yeah, along with that evolution of self-consciousness, as we became more and more human, we began to develop an intelligence. And with that intelligence, we started looking at the world around us. And we became aware that somehow we are not alone. That we see ourselves, what we can see with our rare, but we also became aware that there are spirits that we cannot see. So there is me, there is the animals and so on, and there are things that are beyond us that are, we look at thunder, lightning, rain, we, they, they're frightening, we don't understand them. We know that, they understand, we know, so we started giving them personalities. We started thinking that these spirits that are around us can help us, can help us, can help us. That when we realize that we are not alone, yeah, when we realize that we are surrounded by beings that are helpful and beings that are not helpful. All right? And those and that is why when our early ancestors started looking at the world around them, they didn't understand how the world operated. So thunder, lightning, rain, they were terrifying. Right? And we began to give human personalities to these things, right? And we realize at the end of the day, all human beings have one thing in common, and that is we want happiness. We want security. We want safety, all right, on the one hand. And we know that we can't do it alone. So we began to the need to communicate. We needed to somehow find, can we get those spirits that are behind us waiting to whack us? Yeah, and that, how can we keep those guys happy? How can we keep those guys with one? And they are powerful. So can we somehow use this intelligence that we have to make those spirits work in our favor? So take the, this is what you call numina. Numina is the feeling that you have that you are not alone. The feeling that you have there are spirits around us. The feeling that you have these spirits can be helpful or if you treat them wrong, they can give, make life hell for you. Okay? But at the same time, while we were doing that, we were developing a thing called cunning. We were able, we humans have the way of survival. We use our intelligence to somehow survive. And how do we survive? Yeah, there is this thunder, there is this lightning, there is this flood, there is this fire. They're all against us. But if I can pray to them, if I can pray to them, make them to come and help me. Yeah, now, problem. There is thunder, there is lightning, there is all these things that are going against my happiness, my security. I need, I know, if I treat them well, they will protect me. If I treat them badly, they will. How do I communicate? The need to communicate. How do I tell them what I want? Yeah, I can't talk to them because my language is not good enough. I can't talk to the spirit. So I need to, what we call, act it out. It's called sympathetic magic. For example, 
we are going through this now, no rain, and crops are dying. And I know that those spirits, the rain God, for example, I need the rain God to help me. So I can't talk to the rain God and say, hey, Ujan, that turun lah. You know, because they don't speak Bahasa, you see. So, so we, we need to somehow, how do we communicate? Very important, I'm coming to rituals. Yeah. In the absence of language to communicate with those spirits, I found something else. I could communicate them by action. So instead of telling E Ujan Turon, I say, and they are put your boat too. Okay, and then we say, then they say they realize, oh, he wants rain. Then what happens is he misunderstands, gives too much rain. Then you say, <laughs> now, now, I did it this time. Next year comes around. And when next year comes around, I say, oh, it's becoming hot. I better start informing the gods. Yeah? Last year, what did I do? I did this, and then I did that, and then I did this. Rituals are starting. Okay? And then you do it right, the rain comes. You do it wrong, the rain comes. What went wrong? My grandfather tells me, no la, you do like this, cannot. You know, it must do a special way. Rituals come, we do the same thing in the same way. Because as humans, we also like order. Now, put that in the Chinese context. In the winter, 10,000 years ago, it was terrifying. We never knew that winter will end and spring will come. <clears throat> we, we had to make sure that we make that winter go. The winter go and the spring come. We ask the sun god to come back. Huh? Or the rain god don't come. And so on. Okay, so as this goes on, rituals. Now these rituals, it's a long story, but any culture that you go to, whether it's Red Indian or Indian or even Aboriginals in uh, Australia, they all have the same need, the need for happiness, the need for security. All right? And because we don't understand, we think we can bribe the gods. Don't think only police. All the gods can be bright. And we, with our cunning, we know exactly when and how to do what. <clears throat> okay? <clears throat> so, as time went on, when Chinese culture became Chinese culture, and Indian culture became Indian culture, Western culture, and all these different cultures, at the base is survival. <clears throat> okay? <clears throat> So all the things, just now the question was asked, why do we not sweep the house on New Year's Day? Very simple answer. It's Mother's Day off. <laughs> but if you say that, that's not a very good answer. But if you say the, 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 the kitchen god, yeah, doesn't want you to disturb the house. You don't want the ong to run away. And then if you do it like this, then it's different. If you do like that, it's different. Start with the right leg first. Don't start with that. All these rituals come about. All right? And each one culture. Okay? And then we come to the uh, point where we say, oh, our culture is the only culture. All other cultures are wrong. But when we understand that all of these are designed to make the gods, to, this is what we call sympathetic magic. We make the gods do what we want the gods to do. And so the purpose of ritual, where I understand there's going to be a lion dance after this. Yeah. And what is the purpose of the lion is to come and ensure, yeah, with a lot of noise, yeah, the only people who don't like, Chinese New Year, I think, are dogs. <laughs> the, but, but we don't care about them, you know. Our happiness, our safety is very much more important. Okay, all right. Now, let me, okay, so uh, I think I've covered a lot. Numina is that fear of the unknown. 
I don't know what is behind there. But I know what is behind there is always very fierce and very strong, thunder, lightning, very much. I am nothing. Okay? But that thing is so powerful. That's why you notice when they make statues, the aboriginals, the, the Mahameri people, they make statues. It's always uh, very fierce, big tongue, big teeth, big everything. All right? So how you get how you get those guys to come to your side through acting it out and this acting it out gives you all the rituals of the world okay the basically that's what i'm trying to get there and survival escape from danger and earliest of course was hunting but by the time we are talking it already moved from hunting to agriculture. We stay in one place where it is necessary for rain to come and rain to stop at the right time, all right, to ensure. But all of this, any culture in the world, there is only one aim, and that is to ensure our survival. When our survival is ensured, our happiness is ensured. So at the end of the day, that's all, all over the world. So there is no need to say that when I change my religion, I need to throw my culture out of the window. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with eating oranges except if you have a bad sore throat. Okay? So all these things will help you. Okay. All right. The need to communicate. And there comes the next word, shamanism. Some people can dance better than other people. So it's obvious when, you, when, when we do anything, yeah, ask people to, to, to do an activity, some can do it better. Some can be more efficient. So these were the original priests, people who conduct the rituals, the experts who do it the right. Some people can do it better than others. Uh, that as time went on, shamanism comes into the picture where we have specialists who can speak to the gods. And so they do this activity. So we have this class of priests who come about who help us to control nature. That's basically survival. Okay? All right. So sympathetic magic, dance, drama, rituals closely connected with daily life. Rituals are they collected with daily life, with our survival. So whatever activity that we do, and we do it regularly, that's another important point to remember. Why are these rituals always the same? Because it gives us a sense of order, a predictability. You know that come the end, uh, 23rd of December, you make that Tao Swan. What's that? Tong Yin, yeah. Yeah, you, you make that uh, Tong Yin. That's on the 23rd of December. Because that's when 22nd. Ah, okay. I cling mana Tao Yin Swan. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, what is the purpose of that? The purpose of that to ensure, to strengthen the coming back of the sun. The sun was weak, and we didn't know that it's the earth going around and all of that. But we know that we have to wait because the coming back of the sun, the strengthening of the sun affects our ritual, our, 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 our happiness. Okay? All right. So i uh, collected with daily, li daily life. Our survival depends on these rituals. The more we understand with the help of science how these things work, the, more, the less we need all these things. We only need these things on one level. That's the point I'm trying to make now. Very clever people who know a lot about science and technology will tell you, where God, there's two boys jumping around, you call this a lion. You know, and then you pray, you pray like that, you pray to the devil, you pray like that, the devil will take you when you die, frighten us all. But no, we can continue with those rituals because while we are talking about science and technology, there is one part of us, yeah, 
that will never be affected by that. E even as an outsider, when I see that lion, yeah, when, especially when that lion comes like that and then he turns around, you know, it makes my child, the child inside me, come out. The, the, the magic of that, that no science can explain. What is it? So when, and, and knowing that for centuries, my ancestors had been calling this lion. My ancestors had been burning these joysticks. My ancestors had been firing these firecrackers. Yeah? And I am doing it also. That gives me a sense of continuity. It tells me who am I? Who am I? Okay? All of this now I'm talking is pre-Buddhist. All right? All right. And finally, the next step is it got incorporated into organized religion. When the Taoists come into the picture, all right, and all these lay activities that we do in the temples and all around us, when we do that, it becomes part of our religion. Right? And then we say that if we do it right, we will get benefits. If we do it wrong, we don't get... You don't have to believe all that. But it gives me a sense of continuity. It gives me a sense of pride as a, as a Chinese. It gives me a sense of pride that this is what my ancestors did. As a Sinhalese, I got my own rights and rituals, but they, behind it, it's all the same. It's all bribing the gods to do things the way we want. Okay, it, 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 it's just that. Maybe now we have changed it and said, rather than bribe the god, bribe the policeman, help more helpful. Okay. I'm not saying bribe policeman, eh? I'm saying it's more, I just say it's more helpful. Not necessarily, but okay. For a long, long time, and even today, for a long, uh, many people would do all these things saying that there is a direct result. All right. And that, when they were doing all of this, missionaries that came from other cultures came and looked at what we were doing as Chinese or as Indians or whatever, and they started laughing at us and say that these are all work done by the savages, people who don't understand. Yeah? And those who don't understand do this, they are going to go to hell. All right? And that's where we call, then, then comes another group of people, the scientists, who say that you cannot control nature like this. All right? There is another way of doing it. Science can do everything. All right? And a point came where we are all still in that kind of a, a mode where we are a little bit embarrassed of these things and things. And civilized people don't do this. Civilized people don't jump around with, with, with uh, uh, lions and, uh, and all of this. We don't do this. Yeah? These are all people who don't understand nature. Who don't, but we don't do this this way. However, while that went on, they, they started thinking that there was no need for all of this, through all of this. Unfortunately, what they did not... Uh, see was while we discarded the Chinese way of doing things or the Indian way of doing things, we grasped the Western way of doing things. So instead of lions, we put Christmas trees. So instead of having roast pig, we eat uh, roast uh, turkey. And then we say, oh, okay, we are modern, we are civilized. Okay, but uh, 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 the age of reason came when people changed uh, as we were getting more and more uh, understanding of the way science worked, more and more we lost faith. And this happened in the West where we lost faith in belief. We lost our faith in religion. And we said that science can do everything. And even today, there's a lot of people who believe that you don't need it. The atheists who believe that you don't need any of this. Yeah? My point is, that yes, we do need this. Okay? We do need this. All right. Uh, what, what happened was, remember I told you that 
because of agriculture, because of uh, uh, originally we were hunters. And when we were hunters, we meaning the human race, when we were hunters, we had different types of danger. And that different type of danger represented by fierce animals, rain. And when we go hunting, we need to help of the gods to help us to kill that dinosaur, to help us to kill that huge animal. We are so small using those animals. But as, when we stopped as hunters and we became uh, agriculture, we started planting, our needs changed. We don't need to be afraid of wild animals. We tame them and we, we, uh, we keep them like cows and so on. All right? And so agriculture helped that. On the other hand, yeah, while we were giving up to agriculture, we gave up hunting and moved to agriculture. The needs remained the same. The need was survival. The need was this time not help me to kill the dinosaur, help me to make the rain come. But the need was there, but the manifestation is different. So agriculture gives rise to urbanization. And, and uh, in the last hundred years or so, we started living in cities never before. And so our needs are different again. All right. Now, and people started to rational thought, a tendency to ab ab abandon religious dogma, rituals. There came a time in the 17th century when the church, when the Bible was thrown out, people said, this is all rubbish, there's no such thing. And they threw everything out. And the result was that so what we are suffering today's world the result was that when we threw away religion, when we threw away our very important psychological part of us, manifested by things like these rituals, like uh, New Year, and, and, and Cheng Beng is another important one. Yeah? All of these things, yeah, we, when we threw away, we were left with a vacuum. Today, the, I just heard this uh, very interesting story. Somebody just came back from China and asked her, what were you doing in China? She said, the Chinese government had invited people to teach wellness meditation because in that particular uh, province, that particular province, 40 children were committing suicide every year. This is now. It's happening now. Children are committing suicide. Why? Because the pressure is too great. They have only science to support them. They cannot believe. They can't go to a temple and say, I've got a stomachache. I can't study. Go and burn this yellow paper, write something, drink the water, and I'll be cured. Okay? It may not be scientifically right, but psychologically there are things that we still have no control over nature. All right? So that move has left us with a vacuum. When we gave up religion, when we gave up our beliefs, but had nothing to replace, science cannot. The late, not the late, sorry, sorry, sorry. Dr. Mahate. Uh, <coughs> no, so many of them are going, I thought, uh, and yeah, uh, what did Dr. Ah, Dr. Mahate, somebody else said it, but he quoted, science can tell us how. Science can tell us how, but science can never tell us why. Religion is necessary for us to satisfy that curiosity part of us. What we need to do is to understand very clearly that there is a difference between religion and spirituality. While we give up religion, in the, in the case of Christianity, for example, a lot of people in the West especially cannot accept some of the things that are taught. 
So they have given it all up. In place of that, they have nothing. Right? I'm coming to in Buddhism, we why we accept rituals, what are the levels on which we accept rituals? Okay? All right. Now, the word religion comes from the Latin word religio. Religio means to bind, to bind. You are tied down to something. That means blindly you, you are uh, enslaved practically. What are you enslaved to? You are enslaved to this power that can do your good or do harm to you. All right. And so your when you bind yourself to that power, you surrender to that power to do everything for you. Okay. You give up your humanity. You surrender to the power. That is the meaning of religion. By that token, Buddhism is not a religion because we do not bind ourselves to a higher power. We have the same needs. The needs are happiness. The needs are security. All right? But we say that this happiness and this security cannot come with binding ourselves to a higher power. And how do we please that higher power? What I've been saying all along. How do we please? We find ways and means of conducting rites and rituals. Yeah. How do you pray? How many times do you pray? All right. And what do you what do you bring to the power? The fruits, the whatever. All right. The offerings. All of these things, yeah, you give up. Right? But that, that is what binds you. The question is now asked, and this is a question that was asked during the Buddha's time. It's not a new question. I do not believe in this higher power. I do not believe that this higher power can control my life, can forgive me or not. I don't believe that. What is the reply. What is the alternative? The Buddha gives the alternative. The alternative is to seek within yourself yeah, and find the inner meaning towards it. Don't ask for happiness from outside. Create the happiness within yourself. How do you create that happiness? You create that happiness with understanding. So today, when I watch that lion coming in, I don't physically believe that the lion can bring me on. Okay? It won't. It won't. But it will make me happy. I've seen something beautiful, something that had been happening for 5,000 years. And I am part of that. And that, that gives me a sense of happiness. See, the shift has changed. But the manifestation remains the same. And the using of red. Yeah? The, the using of red as a color. During Chinese New Year, we, we, I personally lo love to see so much of red. Okay? What, what does it do to me? Should, should leave me cold. It doesn't. All right? Because it, there's something there. So th that's what we call a religion, sacred and profane. There are some things, yeah, which we, with all our scientific technology and all of that, there are some things which we set aside as special. For example, what we call a sacred space. No one would think of coming here and doing a disco in front of the Buddha image. Why? Because there is a place for that. That's a place for that. But this is a sacred. Every culture, every culture has a place set aside. Whether you're a Muslim with a mosque or a Hindu with a temple, yeah, we have this special space set aside. No science can tell you this is special, can give you extra power. But when we come here, we get that peace. So that is what we call sacred. And profane, 
you, as I said, you wouldn't do that. Profane is the, the disco, the pub. Okay? So these two are separated. The need is the same. The need is I'm looking for something inside of me. All right? And I don't look for it. I don't look for it in the disco. I look for it here. If I want peace, if I want that sacred space. Okay? And of course, a lot of people have given up religion, but instead they have found that same feeling, that same in art. Music, drama, theater, all right? And the, 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 the profane, profane meaning you don't rely on religion, but you rely on your inner sense of spirituality, okay? All right. What is spirituality? Remember I said to you, the Buddha had said yeah, that all these activities that you do, you can continue to do, provided you give a new meaning to it, a new understanding of how it, you all know the story of Sigalovada. Sigalovada uh, Sutra, where the Buddha meets this young man performing the ritual performing the ritual of bowing to the east, bowing to the west, south, bowing to the west, bowing to the north, bowing to the and up and down, six directions. So the Buddha goes to him and sees this guy performing this ritual. And the Buddha asks him, what are you doing? He said, I'm performing a ritual. What is this ritual? Oh, I don't know. My father taught me this. My father said that I must do this every morning. Why? Don't know why. Buddha said, don't lie. Don't simply say, don't know why. Papa, what? You what? You eco saja. No. The Buddha then says, gives it a new, old ritual, new meaning. Yeah. The old ritual is bow to the east. The Buddha says, I give you a new meaning to that. Instead, of bowing to the east, there is no value in that. Yeah, there, there is value in bowing. I don't do it, that's why I got a big stomach. But the value of bowing to the east, no special power. But the Buddha said, I give you a new power. When you bow to the east, you are not bowing to the sun, you are bowing to your parents. You see the shift? You're bowing to your parents. Why parents? Because parents are the ones who gave you life. The East is where the day begins. So in the same way as the East is where the day begins, you pray. Don't pray to the sun. The people who gave you life are your parents. Pray to them. Then East, South. Why do you bow to the South? You bow to your teachers, yeah? You bow to religious people and so on, yeah? You bow to the parents, you bow to religious teachers, you bow to family, your husband, your wife, your children, yeah? And how do you do that? How do you bow? You bow by uh, 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 not, not praying to them, by looking after their deeds, yeah? All of us have rights, all of us have responsibility. You see, this simple act of bowing, the ritual of bowing in the six directions is given a new meaning by the Buddha by saying that you are the center of society. And as the center of society, you pay respects to parents, you pay respects to teachers, you pay respects to uh, family, yeah? You pay respects to religious leaders, you pay respects to the gods, and you pay very important respects to the people who work for you, your employees, and so on. And when you have all of them, your rights, as, as a human being, I have the right. As a husband, I have rights. But I not only have, what are these rights? The, I expect, this is a 
talking Indian, talking 2,500 years ago, and my wife is not here. As a husband, I expect that my wife sleeps after I have gone to bed. Yeah, she has to make sure that, and then wakes up before I do. That's why I'm saying she's not here. Okay? Uh, right? Uh, the, the, this is just one of the, but it does not mean that because I have these rights, these are rights alone. I have responsibilities. I'm glad she's not here still because one of these responsibilities is I must speak kindly to her. I must give her control of the family expenses. Yeah. I must give her suitable gifts at the right of jewelry. I must buy for her jewelry. Luckily now got Valentine's Day, one rose to go. Okay. Oh, all right. Well, I, I got I got way late. All right. Here's an example of how a meaningless ritual of bowing in the six directions the Buddha converts that to a very spiritual exercise, something you do every day. He did not throw away the, the point I've been making. He did not throw away the ritual and say this is stupid. You will go to hell for believing it. What he did was he gave it a new meaning. Why did he do so? Because the spirituality that is associated with all of this, that is what needs to be maintained. So we may not believe in the lion. We may not believe in the dragon. In that there are and that is why the Chinese government is so worried and bringing back meditation wellness meditation Chinese government very quietly of course all right and more quietly the spiritual leaders are coming from India Shh. okay all right all right, right. what is this way Spirituality, remember my, my thesis is rites and rituals which have one meaning are now given a new meaning and this is through the development of spirituality. And what is spirituality? The experience of the spirit, experience of the beyond, of the ultimate, what we would call the divine. The divine does not refer to the gods that we know in established religion. We mean that part of us which is higher than basic food, shelter, and sex. All right? Basically, basic needs. There's something more to us than, than these raw needs. Okay? All right. Spirituality is based on a deep mystical perception that that lion means something more than just a, 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 a doll or, 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 or a skin. Yeah? When it comes alive, it brings a, a community together. All right? Based on a deep, religion is conditioned by history and culture. And if we give it up, and adopt, if we give that up, we have to adopt something else. Yeah? But, but, but why do you have to adopt something else when you can see the inner meaning of what we have with us now? So, for, so Chinese New Year. So when I took part in that Lo Sang exercise, I was behaving as a human being. My fellow human beings in China developed this and they found and they joy. It, it didn't mean that I will live longer just because I did low sun. Okay? You say low sun, right? Sorry? Yeah, Sramban. Sramban, where I was born. 
1940. Yeah. Malaka nola sraman la. See how we can fight. <laughs> but but that, that 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 that's a beautiful point. The point is how well it got took hold of the the population. It was such a beautiful meaning. It only has a six, 60, 70 year old history. But the amount of joy, the amount of spirituality that it brings. Uh, okay? Uh, now I have to deal with the Singaporeans. <laughs> uh, yeah? Nora Kerr wasn't even there. Okay. Rituals of various kinds are a future of all human societies, past or present. They include not only the various worship rites of organ worship of organized religion, all the different rites that we go through, rites of passage of certain societies, atonement and purification rites. These are every culture, every group of people have their own way of what is there called rites of passage. When I go from one stage of life, I am, a, uh, I am born. There is a rite of passage. There is a whole lot of ceremonies that go along with that. Then I go to school. When I go to school, I kindergarten. There's a, there's a rite of passage there. In Sri Lanka, in India, for example, that day is a very important day for the child where the child is first told how to hold a pen. And, be, and that way, the child is guided through education. Then he graduates uh, from kindergarten. Then he goes on. Then he gets married. And then as he gets married, his child comes up. When his child comes up, each one is marked by certain rituals. And that's what it means by rites of passage, Certain societies, uh, atonement, atonement is by uh, utang lah. You know, atonement is where you penance, where you you pay, you fasting is one of those things. Okay, all right. Mm. Yeah, place of rituals in Buddhism. Place of rituals in Buddhism, Sila Samadhi Panya. But in Buddhism, we talk about three stages of spirituality. Right? And the three stages, the Noble Eightfold Path. Now, in place of belief, in place of prayer, in place of all of this, the Buddha gives us with an alternative way of practicing spirituality. Spirituality meaning there's two parts of us, the body and the spirit. All right? And the body part, science can handle. But the spirit part, science cannot handle. And religion, in the way that the Buddha expressed it, he says, yes, you can have higher states of experience. You can have higher sense of happiness, of peace, or whatever. And how do you deal with that? Here, yeah, sila, samadhi, and panya. Now, what is important to understand is that these rituals, Buddhism has a lot of rituals. We just went through the whole series of that, all right? And the whole meaning. Now, when we offer, the, let, let, let's take that, the, this ritual itself, yeah? I think you all know this, so we'll go through it quite fast. Uh, offering flowers. These are not bribes offered to the Buddha. Go back thousands of years, they were bribes offered to the gods we couldn't see. The same thing of offering has come down to us as an offering. But the Buddha tells us, don't offer the flower to me. It's, it's meaningless. But when I offer the flower, I reflect. And what do I reflect? 
that this flower, which is so beautiful, will fade in a few days. In the same way, my life, which I consider so beautiful, will also fade. So let me not think that everything is permanent. So something which was offered as a bribe to the deity has now become a source of meditation for me. So when I offer the flower, I think, just as this flower will fade, so will my life. So don't let me go around thinking that I will be here forever. All right? I may have my jail term reduced, but some other jail term will catch me. Okay? Why are you laughing? I'm not... Okay, all right. All right, all right. All right. Then the Buddha says, just, just like in the Sigalovada Sutra, the Buddha tells us, yeah, that what has gone wrong with rites and rituals is we believe that the rites and rituals can save us. That the source of the, the that is the end. The Buddha says, no, it's a means to an end. Very important difference. In Buddhism, rites and rituals bring us to something. This offering the flower does not end with bribing the Buddha. It goes beyond to educating me to think about my life and how I am going to handle my life. Similarly, the, the light. The light should, should remind me that while it is very, very beautiful, it is not real. It is not real. Now, this light comes about with the combination of the oil, the wick, yeah, the oil, the wick, and the air all around. When oil, wick, and air come together, the light exists. Remove the wick, remove the oil, remove the air all around, what happens to the light? It disappears. Yeah? The light appears dependent on these three conditions. So long as we feed the three conditions, there is life. Remove those, there is no light. When there is the light, when there is a life, there is suffering. There is pain. Remove that. When you remove all that, there is no more life. Just offering this light. The Buddha doesn't need this light. He's enlightened already. Okay? So when we offer this light, new meaning. The ritual is the same. Every religion offers light. But in Buddhism, when we offer the light, we also reflect. So our religion goes beyond to the level of spirituality. Okay? All right. Uh, it's a means to an end. The parable of the raft, of course, you know that what are we doing? We are going on a journey. And what is that journey? That journey is towards enlightenment to understand who am I? What am I doing here? Am I needed? Three questions. These questions, now we are going through. All right? And... The Buddha says that we are going on that journey and to go on the journey, we need help. We come to a river. A man is going on a journey. He comes to a river. And very important point, yeah? His destination is past the river. But he is now at the, this bank of the river. He has two ways of going across. One way is sit down here and pray to God and say, God, please ask that site to come here. After all, you are God, ma. Cannot happen. The Buddhist attitude is, you use your own effort. What do you do? How do you use your own effort? You build a raft. You cut the bamboo. You tie the bamboo. You build the raft. You row yourself across using effort. So you use your effort, you get across. Once you have got to the other side, 
say thank you to the raft and throw it away. Don't carry it on your head because that's not the end of your journey. That's what a lot of people do. They carry the religion on their head. All right? And say that this really, that's why there's so much of anger about these symbols of religion being abused and so on. A Buddhist will have no, no, no big deal. These are only rafts to get you across. After that, you are on your own. You have to travel by yourself. All right? That's where your own effort comes in. So rites and rituals are the raft. Rites and rituals help you to get to the other side. Once you have reached the other side, you don't need. Now, this is beautiful teaching. The Buddha says, a time will come when you don't need Buddhism. You can throw away your yellow string. Okay? There's a lot of people tell me, I ask them, why you wear this for protection? Protection for what? Yeah? Oh, protection? No. After you wear this, uh, three days it will protect you. Okay? I always tell him, in that case, wear this, go to the middle of the road, wait for a 10-ton truck, ten ton truck to come and say, I am protected by the Buddha Dhamma Sangha. This is just to remind you to practice the Noble Eightfold Path. It's only a reminder. If you use, you go to the middle of the road, you see the 10 ton truck roll, this should remind you to get out of the way. It won't stop the, the lorry, okay? Anyway, to come back. So the, the raft is, so rites and rituals or whatever are important. They will help you to get across, but the journey begins there by yourself. For the Bodhisattva, it began when he went and he shaved his hair and he started at the age of 29 until the age of 36 searching. By that time, he didn't need the gods. Okay? So, <clears throat> it's a means to an end. All right? Uh, <clears throat> rites and rituals give us a sense of order. Rites and rituals give us a sense where every year we know come this time, yeah, we have to do all of this. We know now Chinese New Year is coming, next Chinese New Year coming, next February, next year February, okay? So about November, I start making my quick update, okay? And start booking all the orders online, yeah, getting all the plastic containers to pollute the world yeah all it all everything because there is a season there is a time to do what yeah for everything that we do there is a we human beings all human beings like this sense of order that we know this is going to happen that's why 22nd of december we know that if we do this the sun will come and spring will come this is how to order. I, I, my, my life is organized. Otherwise, I will suffer from chaos. I don't know where I am going. All right? So rites and rituals are important. If all of us do the same thing all the time, it gives us the sense of peace, order. All right? But if everybody does everything one way or another, so rites and rituals are important, but they have a place. They are only a means to an end. After that, you are on your own. After that, you don't need rites and rituals. The Arahans and the Buddha don't need rites and rituals. Okay? To, to... I think we should stop there. Uh, not my... The rites and rituals themselves are enough. They are not. The offering the flower is not enough. Reflecting on what the flower means, that is the important thing. All right? So we have to consider that we don't go just repeating. The, the story that goes with that, the, 
Buddha was walking along a river bank. And as he was walking along a river bank, he saw a Brahmin in the middle of the river, you know, bathing. So the Buddha asked him, what are you doing? The guy said, well, you're Buddha, you don't know I'm bathing. La. <laughs> So, he said, so the Buddha said, yeah, I know that. But why are you bathing here? He said, oh, because this is a holy river. This is a holy river. And if I bathe in this holy river, all my sins will be thrown away. I will be purified. So I'm performing this ritual to purify myself. Then the Buddha said, what do you do after you finish praying? Oh, I go home. Oh, when you go home, what happens? Yeah, you become dirty again, come back the next day, right? He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Every time I come, I perform this ritual. Then the Buddha said, if that is all that it needs to purify yourself, bathe in the holy river, the fish in this river are more holy than you. So why? They never go home. You see, <laughs> very important. The, the, the point of the ritual, the point of the ritual must never be forgotten. So when we, basically, we, this is the ritual that we all rely on, okay? So it has to be done with meaning, you have to find out the meaning, okay? And then, of course, it creates awe and there's a time whenever we perform the right rituals with the right understanding, all right? We have a sense of a greater being that we are no longer stuck by gravity. Yeah? Rites and rituals help us to rise above religiosity to spirituality. Okay? So the Buddhist attitude is, go ahead, go and perform all your rites and rituals. They are very important, but know their place. Beyond, there is another ritual, sila samadhi. The sila must lead you to develop concentration of the mind. In Buddha, that's the difference between Buddhism and all other religions. Yeah, Do good, avoid evil. Every religion teaches that. But only Buddhism emphasizes purify the mind. Uh, so these rites and rituals are good, but they must lead from there to purification of the mind. Okay, I think it's a good time to stop. Thank you very much. Sad, sad.